Hi, you're watching Smart Home Things. Today we're going to show you how to build a six drive micro server. So this is the Gen 7 model of micro server. There is a Gen 8, uh, but it's a little bit more difficult to fit the six drives into. So today we're going to be talking just about the Gen 7. Um, this specific model is the N54L version. Now you're probably wondering where we're going to fit these six drives, um, given that the standard machine only has space for four internal three and a half inch drives. Um, but as you can see at the top here, uh, we have a five and a quarter inch drive bay, and this is where we're going to be able to fit our additional two drives. You are going to need some additional equipment in order to fit the two extra drives. This includes a eSATA to SATA cable, a regular SATA cable, and I'll put links in the description below uh, where you can find these. If you want to fit two three and a half inch drives, uh, you will need some kind of mounting bracket um, in order to fit them into the five and a quarter inch drive bay. To remove the top of the case, we just need to swing it around. There's a screw here that needs loosening. And once that's loosened, the top part of the case will simply slide forward and then you can reach over and carefully lift it off. Now we're going to fit our SATA cable. This is probably the trickiest part because we actually need to slide out the motherboard. Uh, luckily HP have made this relatively straightforward, uh, but we do need to relocate some of the wires in order to get it out. Firstly, we need to remove this large cable here so that we can slide the motherboard out. The second thing we need to do is to untighten these blue screws here on the motherboard. They might be quite tight. Once the thumb screws are loose and they're free, you should see that the motherboard is able to slide. Now, <clears throat> you may also have to unclip the wires from the right hand side here in order to get the motherboard further out. So just be very careful as you do so. Okay. All right, and now, the motherboard should slide a bit further out. Now, there are a number of other connectors still attached here, and if we wanted to remove the motherboard entirely, we would actually have to remove them, uh, but we don't actually need to in this case. This is actually the SATA slot that we need to access on the motherboard, so pulling the motherboard out this far is enough for our purposes. Here is the SATA cable that we need to attach. So. If we get this the right way around, it should just slot right in. There we go, and it should just click in there, be nice and secure. What we need to do now is actually route our cable up through the micro server into the area where we're going to be mounting the additional drives. So now we've got our SATA cable attached, we need to route it to the top part of the server where the new drives are going to be located. Um, I recommend that you route it through the existing tunnel here in the top left hand corner. This is where an existing cable already goes through, so it's a good place to thread the new SATA. So the cable just pushes through here, and then it'll pop out the back. and then that's ready to attach to our new drives. Now as you can see I've got my two drives mounted to a bracket here. I'll put a link again in the description below. Uh, unfortunately this bracket did require um, some modification in order to fit into the micro server case um, but it works quite well once it's in. As you can see I've attached the uh, twin SATA to Molex power adapter to my two drives. <laughs> And the other end of the Molex adapter here just connects into the spare um, slot on in the top of the server. To put the motherboard back is the opposite of what we did before. So we need to push the motherboard back in. Remember to clip 
these wires on the right back end. Then the motherboard should push back and then we should be able to tighten the two thumb screws on either side to secure it. Once that's done we just need to tuck this large wire underneath here. The e-solder slot is right at the bottom on the back. All we need to do is take our e-solder cable which will plug into the slot at the bottom but we obviously need to get it inside the case. Now, it's almost as though HP actually had this in mind when they designed the case, um, because there's actually a really handy slot here on the side. If you actually pull the tab down, this actually rotates and opens up, and it's very, very easy to route your eSATA cable up inside the case and through to the top. Now we've got our two SATA cables located at the top of the machine. Uh, we just need to connect up our drives. Once everything's connected up, we need to put the top of the machine back on. So it should just slot on the top there, leaving a slight gap at the front, and then the whole thing should just slide backwards, and then you can re-secure it with the thumb screw at the back. In order to connect the internal drives, all you do is push the tab at the bottom here. This will flip out and then you pull and that's your drive caddy uh, to connect into your drives. HP actually have a very nice feature here which is that they supply the screws for you to attach your drives. Um, so along the bottom of the door here you can actually see the screws mounted and on the inside of the door it might be difficult to see. Uh, there's actually an L-shaped uh, tool for fitting those screws in. Once you've actually connected your drive into the caddy, all you need to do is to slide it back into the slot, push down on this tab here, and then it will click into place. And there you have it, our six-drive microserver. This has been Smart Home Things. I hope you found that helpful.